Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Green Arrow FPL podcast and fantasy football hub as we look ahead to blank game week 29. My name is Fergie, and I'm here as usual with the brilliant Rich Clark. Uh, Rich, how are you? And what colour was your arrow in double game week 28? Good evening, Fergie. Good evening, everyone. Uh, yes, uh, got a nice big green arrow for a change. Um, so feeling, yeah, pretty good after a real roller coaster of a game week. I'm sure it was for many listening, watching. Uh, got, uh, I think, 72 points uh, minus a minus four point hit. And uh, yeah, got uh, into the top 250K for the first time this season. So we're on a roll, you know, ranks a quarter of what it was six weeks ago so we're on the right trajectory Fergie and uh I'm amazing the difference in how you feel after a big green arrow versus after a big red arrow it's quite an incredible difference in terms of your enthusiasm for this this crazy game that we play it, so uh it, it does I, do, I don't know how, like how you feel at times but I do I do feel the less the less effort sometimes I put into this game the kind of more you get out. It's a very, very strange, strange game. In lots of other fantasy games, you have a lot more engagement with the game, a lot more involvement, you're a lot more in control of your team. You you have to be engaged, and if you're not, you you are punished. Whereas in yeah. this game, sometimes because there's only one transfer and one captaincy to make each week, you want to, you almost want to do more with your teams, don't you? You always want to do more, and then yeah. you get almost pressured into trying to think a bit too cleverly or trying to think a bit too far ahead, wherever else. Whereas, you know, I brought Palmer yeah. back this week, which I never brought a wild card. Bang, thirteen points. Uh, happy days, easy peasy. It's just strange old, uh, strange old game, as you say. It is, it, it is, mate. Yeah, I mean, obviously, there's been some swings in my favour. There was a lot of people who did did that very thing. You know, probably bought that Kirkes chap in. You know, had slightly higher attacking upside and ended up with a zero pointer. And then uh, uh, this chap Zabania, I, I'd never heard of before. Last I don't week. think anyone has to be honest. To be the, the, the flavour of the uh, of the week as a transfer in popped up with his first ever Premier League goal in a. In a in a very roller coaster double game week, so yeah, cock a hoop, cock, yeah, that's a great and you, that moments like that you have to celebrate them because we spend most of our season, you know, feeling underwhelmed, disappointed, down, and then something great happens like that. You've got to celebrate it. So, 100%. if you've got Zabania in, guys, you know, celebrate it because it's probably going to be his only goal of the season. I think so. It's the fir- isn't it the first <laughs> of his career. Oh, it's the first for Bournemouth. Yeah, definitely. I think he might have scored one in uh, about 2020 when he was playing was for Dynamo Zagreb or somewhere like that. Brilliant. But yeah, um, yeah, he's uh, it's been a while since he's scored one anyway. So, uh, so yeah, rest of the week was was pretty good. Sonny saving the day really for for those who owned him and you know Palmer as well, who I've never really dropped. Um, coming up with the goods, we keep getting these players that you know have been around all season. Incredible. One week it's Phone, one week it's Saka, one week it's Sonia. These guys, you know, uh, people who wild carded them all out and changed them for Bournemouth and Luton players. You know, they've they've they've, they've really struggled. But actually, last week was a better week if you were wild carding in twenty eight than it has been if you did the four weeks previous to that. So, I've seen some pretty good scores for wild carders last week. So. A real roller coaster week. And how did you get on? I'm I think I'm very pleased to say that you beat me last week, mate, after all the stick you've taken. I did. I scored um seventy four points. And it was actually my, my early hero was uh, I think it was in the three o'clock Saturday game, quite a quite surprising goal from Ryan Eight Norrie, which is my my one uh, wild card success. He's had a he had an assist, uh, clean sheet and max bonus in twenty six. And obviously a goal. So that was beautiful because you just, you yeah. know, with that ownership, you look at your live rank and you've shot up. So that, that was really nice. Um, uh, honestly, Rich, after last week, it was one of the toughest game weeks I've had in a long, a lot. It's, it's, since I can remember in terms of being truly 50-50 stumped on what to do and thinking no matter where I go, it's going to be the wrong way. I was so torn between going between a minus eight and a minus 12, even a minus 16 and bench boosting or just... Going without a couple of players, I was quite scared. I was scared of Bowen, you know, and obviously it's, it's worked out because Bowen blanked. But yeah, after after a couple of phone calls and a and a brief walk on Saturday morning, just to just to chill out a bit and realise that there is more to life than uh, social media on a Saturday morning, reading everyone's crazy theories about about everything. That uh, yeah, it did help. So worked out really really well. Um, yeah, I've got Son brought in Palmer. Solanke, Sanessi was really frustrating, but scenes they considered, uh, sorry, scenes scenes they conceded, 
was it five yeah. goals over the two games? It was, it was uh, six over game. the two six games. Yeah, games. you didn't lose out by much there. Um, and by not taking a hit at all as well, you've you, you've got yourself a nice. You've got yourself back in the game, mate. So well done. And uh, Gavin Walsh in the sorry Welsh in the chat brought in Semenyo and captained him. 84 well, well points, done. so just outside the top 10k. Well done. He was my Fergie's a pun for two weeks running, if you remember, in both 27 and 28. And he scored one in 27 and two in 28. So really, really well played. Um, Greg Williams says 31 points for me this week. Wow, that is that is a shocker. Uh, my mate in mid league took a minus 36. He forgot to activate his wild card and he beat him this week. I if I had the violin. Do you know what? I've actually got I've actually got the violin to hand. Greg Oh no, I haven't. Yes, I have. It's here. It's here somewhere. <laughs> Greg, you are absolutely deserving of that. Do you hear that? Thirty one points he scored. And then his mate took a minus thirty six because he forgot to work hard and beat him. That is absolutely he still unbelievable. Beats. Unlucky there, Greg. <laughs> Good stuff. Um anyway, uh, obviously on now to game of twenty nine. Both Rich and I, both our strategies have been pretty clear over the last couple of gaming that will both be free hitting in 29 i think i have four players um you've you've probably got four, so four three three yeah. yeah so yeah. free hits firstly on the agenda um and then we'll look at them for those who are not f- not free hitting the best kind of players to, to look forward there but i'm looking forward to this game week 29 um and then a bit of a break before we before we get the running because it just feels like there's been a crescendo all the way from you know when the news broke, double game at 25 and then 28 and you know, wherever else, it's been this crescendo up to now. And it's almost like almost like a new season starts for the final. Yeah, the final it is. Final. It's been a couple of, uh, you know, since the mid-January winter break, it's been pretty full on, hasn't it? Is, it? Yeah, it hasn't been any let up in the gossip, the jeopardy, the week from week to week. You know, will he play, won't he play? Huge amount of injuries for people to cope That's with been... every week, you know, yourself included. For You know, it's just been, it's been really hard. So I'm, I'm looking forward to a week off and, uh, and forgetting about it for a week after this weekend, certainly. Uh, Chris Woodstock says you really should play your punts, Fergie. Well, I'm, you know, I might, be, I might play one this week. I might play one this week. No way. I don't think can't see anyone speaking about him. Um, but yeah, we'll have a look at that in a little bit. So, firstly, game me twenty nine. Four fixtures we know: Luton and Forest, West Ham, Villa, Fulham and Tottenham, Burnley and Brentford. Not the most exciting of game weeks, but um, we committed ourselves a free hit. So, Rich, let's just have a look at those fixtures and. Think mm-hmm. of how you know how the game is going to go, what the scores are going to be, and then who we should be looking at. So first, Luton and Forest. Uh, just a quick stat before we start on Luton. This was actually shared by Gianni Boutiste this morning. I saw on Twitter that in Luton's last eleven games, there has been fifty goals, which is an average of four point five goals per game, which is just absolutely insane. So not going to be nil. Not going to be nil nil. Not going to be nil nil. And we don't want to target <laughs> the defenders either. So. Are you interested in anyone from no. the the Luton and Forest? Well, forwards? I mean, I, th- I think I said to you on a message. I think I've every single free hit team I've seen, and probably the vast majority of people not free hitting are going to have Doughty in their team. Yeah, yeah. Um, but you know, Luton they might have had a good first half against Bournemouth. They had an absolute shocker in the second half, um, and there's no way they're keeping a clean sheet there. And uh, you know, just wondering if you know, if you do want to go different, you know, maybe even go without Alfie Doty this week. You know, it's, it's not it's not a bad play, particularly if you're you know if you're really going for it and you want to completely differentiate your team. I mean, the the one thing is is that you know Nottingham Forest are not good at set pieces, and so therefore, you know, it's a great game for for Doty in terms of his his crossing and and all the chances that he'll he'll potentially create. And I think there's this, just this bias, isn't there? If he's already in our teams and we bought him for slightly cheaper and he's just returned, you know, he's a bit of a no brainer to stick in a, in a back three that, you know, we're struggling to fill. Um, but really I think I'll stop at, I'll stop at Doty for, for Luton assets. I'm not, I'm not going to load up any more on them, partly because, you know, the, I, I really feel like swinging against the, you know, the half, the, the crowd that aren't free hitting this week yeah. and that therefore having a team that's as different as possible where sensible um, is is the way to go. So likes of Morris, Barkley, et cetera, mm. is going to be in quite a few teams. I, I, I don't really want those guys. So Doughty only for me, possibly even no Doughty. But I am now interested in Nottingham Forest assets because Luton just caved so badly. Um, 
last night. I didn't see the full game in the UK. It wasn't on TV, but I caught the highlights this morning and uh, and that was enough to tell me to uh, to to be careful with Luton. What do you think? Yeah, no, can't can't get excited about Luton really. Maybe Morris a bit more bullish on Morris. Appreciate he's probably in a lot of engaged managers teams, but he's only in thirteen percent overall, which is which is quite low. Um, I expect you know his, his kind of EO around our ranks will be a bit higher than that. But um, do accept Luton, you know Luton has scored a couple of goals. I know he's I know he's blanked in the last two, but the team have have scored goals still, and he's just not quite been in the right place to score to score the goals. Is he if he if he'd have got yeah. A couple of returns in the last week, uh, maybe we'd be a, a bit more bullish on him. So I do, I do like Morris. I think the third striker spot or fifth midfielder spot is definitely when we're going to talk about. He obviously fits fits right into there. I think he's, I think he's probably the best option really. Um, even though you know, I'm sure there'll be a couple of other other players there. Yeah. Above from Forrest, Elanga's hot. Oh, he was he was benched last week tactically apparently, but he's got to be on the radar now, right? Yeah, he's on my radar, um, and I think um, I don't know if we've heard anything from uh, from the manager today, but it it feels like he must start that one. They tried something against Brighton, which was a change in formation and an attempt to you know play wingers, and you know you think Alanga would play on the wing, but you know they they, they were going to play differently in a different form. It didn't really work, did it? They didn't score. No. So I, I can't imagine they'll they'll um, keep going with that that system, and that this is a game they've got to win, right? They're seventeenth and eighteenth, right next to each other in the league. It's an absolute relegation six pointer. So wouldn't be surprised if there's a lot of bookings in the game as well. But I I think Alanga is probably the pick, the one to go for. I mean, Gibbs White is going to be popular because yeah. he's rumored to be on penalties and possibly the safer pick if you're worried about Alanga's minutes, but I think if you're going to go for it, which I am a little bit, I think Alanga will be in my my side. And what about up front, Rich? Any of the Forest forwards interest you? Well, I, we don't quite know who's going to start, do we? Again, that's why I really want, want the presser tomorrow afternoon. Um, it, Chris Wood is another one worth a mention. Um, could be on pens. Yeah, we don't quite know who's on pens. because we the, the lineup changes a lot. And our new is the other one who had a uh, a period of form earlier in the season, but I think he's still injured, isn't he, Aaronie? Um So, so Woods, you know, possibly likely to get the nod as the striker. He's worth a mention, but I, I don't. I think he's a little bit down the order from some of the other candidates for that third striker spot. Well, just looking at the minutes from the Forest forwards, the last uh, kind of five or six games, um, there has been a lot, lots of injuries actually. So. Um, a one year was injured, obviously, for kind of most of the season. His, his, his minutes since then have been 45, 90, 68, 67, 45, 25, and 18. So he kind of got back into the team and then dropped off again. It could be injury related. It could be more, you know, more, you know, more sort of um, form or, you know, the others are, are performing better. Origi was uh, not in the side. Then he got injured and then he's come back and he's played three sub appearances since. And then he's also played 65 and 60 is mo- his most recent two. So he kind of seems to have swapped with a one year. The most interesting one for me, and he is my punt this week, actually, Rich, and he, I am considering playing. If you look at the minutes, right? So before he got injured, the last four games, he played 90, 90, 90, 90. He then played 45 because he got injured. He was then out for five weeks. First game back, 90 minutes. Chris Wood seems to be on paper the 90-minute man, albeit I would say that mm. there were injuries to a one and a Rigi roughly around those times as well. But mm. he, did he score a did he score a hat trick? Was it earlier was it earlier he this season? He did get season? one earlier in the season, yeah. He, yeah, he, did, he strikes yeah. me as that kind of that that kind of player, Chris Wood. Um and like I say, Luton at the moment are just they're just all over the shop. They have had an absolute yeah. going over midweek. I mean Talk about uh, you know confidence levels three nil up half time and losing four three that must be a absolute body yeah. blow um, dagger through the heart that one so I really yeah. think Wood is the the only is, is he going to get the ninety again but according to his numbers according to his his actual minutes played when he's been fit he's played ninety most games recently right. so I'm he's definitely won. That's a bit of a spoiler alert for my my Fergie as a punt, and it's only because we were talking about Forest. I didn't want to talk about Forest and not no, mention no. him. No, so, uh... no, no, that's right. I, mean, I agree. He, he's he's fine. That the third striker spot's the one to punt on. 
Um, and there are three or four, you know, good candidates, but no one out there really knows. They're all yeah, I think right. I think the, the advice for this week is go for the one you fancy. It's only a one week hunt. Okay. If you fancy one, if you fancy Whistler, if you fancy um you know Munier's, you know, any of all of these guys could go off in yes. one game uh and score a brace. So you just just pick one that you like and uh and back yourself. West Ham and Villa, um, obviously Bowen and, uh, and Watkins probably go without saying. Any other interests from West Ham? I see you've got one in your in your. Yeah, I might draft have drafted team. one in. I'm 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 calling on West Ham a little bit over the last twenty four hours. I don't know why. I'll be interesting to see how they get on tonight. I think I might watch their game rather than Villa's um, after after this and and just just do a bit of scouting on them yeah paqueta i think is is worth a mention uh again rumored to be on penalties although james will prowse might end up taking a penalty um certainly back in form several assists recently uh, they're much much better when he plays for them so again watching his minutes tonight watching west ham if west ham go to 120 minutes and a shootout you know what's that going to do to yeah. them uh, lots to, lots in play here but yeah paqueta i think is the the uh, additional West Ham mid that that I'm looking at, yeah, yeah. Um, Pudus is another one worth a mention, yeah. but I think I think because of the pens and because of just the the creativity that Paqueta offers, I think I favour him. I think I prefer Kudus, um, only because points wise he's been a lot more explosive during the season. Mm-hmm. Just before he went off to Afcon, they had that partnership, didn't they? The front three at front, and they were superb. And Kudus was scoring every week, you know, and scoring really good goals as well. And Villa have obviously just got demolished 4-0, um, albeit a couple of those goals were, you know, were kind of after a red card, but they're going to be without McGinn as well, you know, which would, which will impact them. So I think a double West Ham midfield is a, is a pretty good shot. I'd probably go for Kudus over Pogbetta, but yeah, I wouldn't go for any of the, the defenders. Emerson's had a, had a good season, but I think he had a knock last week. If I was to go to anyone, I'd go for him, but Again, a way to Villa. You do expect Villa to score. Um, Villa, obviously, Watkins, um, Douglas Deweese has obviously been playing really well uh, recently on penalties. Um, Leon Bailey, one I've had in my own. He's currently in my draft. He's, he's, I think he's on, my, he's on my bench in my draft, but yeah. he looks a really, really good shout. The only thing is, is he, he does tend to share minutes, doesn't he, with Diaby? I think. I think Diaby. sometimes. Yeah, so. again, it, we might get a clue from tonight's game as to who starts or who comes off early. Um, I think I prefer uh, Bailey to Douglas Luiz. I think Douglas Luiz will probably play deeper um, with McGinn out. Um, and also most of Douglas Luiz's points and goals tend to come at Villa Park rather yeah. than in away games. So I, I'm not sure I'd, I'd, I'd have Luiz on a free here, but he's fine if you've held had him for several weeks yeah. for this fixture. And he, it's just like him to come up with another brace, isn't it? Nice. And a penalty in that, in that, in that fixture. So... I think I was looking at a little graphic um, from our colleague at the hub, Chris Tan, who showed that actually Villa have not given away a single penalty this season, which I didn't wow, know okay. until I saw this graphic. But West Ham have given away six. Wow, we that is a lot. So if you're looking for a team who's more likely to get a penalty, it's going to be Villa. And if you don't read, and that's why that's why Douglas Louise has been popping up and scoring them. All. So, <laughs> if anyone is you know. listening or watching and doesn't read Chris Tan's uh, weekly fish analysis yeah. article, make sure you do. They are absolutely fantastic. They are superb. Yeah, he really crunches the numbers for everybody. That's on fantasyfootballhub.co.uk. Um, Fulham and Spurs next. Uh, obviously, Muniz um, has been playing well for Fulham uh, recently. You did say he was there. Did he he he. He may not play this next game, Rich. You just you kind of whispered it before we started. Didn't quite grab. grab what oh, you were there was some there was some social media um, jeopardy that was that surfaced earlier this week. If you if you're watching and you didn't catch it, there is a, a player on loan from Chelsea with uh, Fulham at the moment, Armando Broya, oh, yeah. and the terms of his loan agreement require him to play a minimum number of minutes. And the person posting this or the source of this information worked out that unless Broya starts this weekend and I assume all remaining wow. games of the season, then Fulham will have to pay Chelsea four million pounds, which is the terms of his loan. So the only way they can avoid paying it is if ironically, if if they play Broya all the time. They play someone they don't want to so, play. Exactly. So, I, so I, I think it's a bit of a kind of nothing, but you know, it, it it was nevertheless, you know, posted to you know 
make people aware of that in case they were going all in on Muniz. Now, I like Muniz. Yeah, I think, same. you know, he's the form budget striker. You know, he scored five goals in six games. Fulham are good at home. Yeah, You know, they've won a lot of matches. They have a lot of chances. And t- Tottenham do give up a lot of chances. Absolutely. And they've got no Van de Ven this weekend, I believe. So I wouldn't be surprised if he gets something. He's another, definitely another. I think top four candidate for for that third striker spot. And and if you and, and again, if you're actually if we go move away from the free hit for one second, quite a lot of teams are trying to make create financial flexibility to get Salah back or you know make some transfers after the break and uh, uh, moving Solanke or another option down to Muniz for a permanent transfer gets you a very playable striker this week, gets you a player that you can have on your bench. If you're moving away from an eight back to a seven and gives you the salary money. So like 4.5 million. A lot. Think, he? Moon is 4.5 million. Wow, yeah. Incredible. Yeah. So a nice option. Definitely. If you are to make a free transfer this week, a um, couple of shouts for it will be in the chat. I think that's, that's a good shout as well. Scored last week, I yeah. think, didn't he? Um, busted walls, clean sheet, much to my eight, eight Norrie's despair. But, um, yeah, really good shout there. Um, in terms of Spurs, uh, Son is going to be incredibly popular, especially after his performance last week. Um, there's been a lot of debate about the defence. Obviously, Madison will be be popular as well. What is what is your overall take on on Spurs, Rich? Yeah, I think they they they're looking good, aren't they? Good form, uh, winning four 0 away. I don't think you'll see much many changes in the side, um, and they'll see a lot of confidence uh, running through them. So. I do think a triple up is 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 a good idea. Um, some choice over the defender. Uh, many people will have perhaps not free hitting would have carried Poro through, um, and he's recovered from injury in time. Uh, so he's a good shout. Uh, Udogi is maybe slightly more attacking uh, for this for this fixture, and if you're struggling for cash, then uh, he might be a better option than Poro to to, to bring in. Um, but I think I'll probably go Poro just because of his set pieces and um, and his ability to earn bonus points yeah. at, a, at a rate of not. So the, worth a, a mention for Romero if you want to go real left field and have something completely different. Um, got quite a lot of goal threat. Also got quite a lot of yellow card threat, but he he is probably the most likely to score out of the defenders, um, I would say. Good shout. Um, just the other one. I, I know it's on our differentials slide next. Brennan Johnson interesting one um as well and with uh Dejan Kuzeski as well play playing in the front three there's a couple of other different there though if you are going son of Madison do do you really want like a triple up in midfield it's triple probably a up. bit much we can go for a if they were playing Luton I'd I'd say if they were playing Luton I'd yeah, probably triple on the show. attack but I I do think Fulham are not going to lay down I think they, yeah. they, that could be a you know three two game to either side you know so um I, th- I think uh, I think I'd have a defender in there just for, for that. Your uh, apparently uh, Paqueta has just scored in Europe against Freiburg. Has he? <laughs> Here's me going go for Kudus oh, yeah. and uh, Paqueta yeah. is man in form. He's already scored right man there. We are. Form. So watch watch him now appear in all three hits in the next twenty four hours. Absolutely. There we are. Nothing to do with the rest of the season. Just just the uh, just the last game. And um, <laughs> finally, Burnley against um, Brentford. If you'd have looked at this fixture a, a few weeks ago is probably you think it'd be a one-way street but Burnley looked to have maybe slightly improved and Brentford have been a bit weak as well it's a bit more kind of in the balance I think who do you fancy from Burnley Rich? Yeah I fancy I fancy Brentford I don't really fancy anyone from Burnley um, I mean it's fine if you've got Charlie Taylor and he's making up the numbers yeah. I mean this uh, is it David Fafana has been yeah. in reasonable form recently again I'd sort of put him about fifth or sixth choice if you're going to you know, want that third striker spot. Um, but I do fancy Brentford and, and I'm thinking of the triple up on Brentford. I'm thinking of targeting this fixture and targeting, you know, oh. the, um, the, uh, the, the Luton fixture to an extent. Um, so yeah, I not sure I'm going to go double Brentford defense, which has been very popular on free hits. Almost every draft I see has got Flecken in it, yeah. you know, as yeah. an away keeper. Um, Reguion appears to be training and um, likely to be fit for the fixture. So I think Reguion will come in because uh, he's very attacking and puts a lot of crosses in and stuff. Um, but then I'm thinking of doubling. You know, again, this third striker spot that we got the choice. I'm thinking of actually having Wissa and Tony. This is the man in front. form, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Because so everyone's going to have Tony. Yeah. 
it's kind of neutralized. So if you want to profit from a Brentford win, you think Brentford going to win the game, you need another you need another attacker in there really. So you could say, well, Reguilon's enough, but actually, I think Visser could be the could be the man. It's going to be Visser or Munoz for me in that third spot, and uh, and probably because I'm tripling on Tottenham, I'll probably go with the Brentford guy. Well, you're at spoiler alert there yeah you're rich um yeah i haven't, haven't got much more to add there i'm, I'm probably a bit, a bit more of a fafana fan than you are um he's come into the team obviously um on loan isn't he and his and his and his and his minutes he's he came twice off the bench and then the last five years after that he's played 90 every single game he is he is the main man brentford haven't been too good at the back the defensive numbers of the season have been quite decent but more recently they they just haven't been so i, I do expect him to actually get a return it's just whether if i fancy him to get a return is that enough when you consider the other options we're maybe talking about like the fifth midfielders yeah. or third or third yeah. strike like it is and it, it, they're wide open if you look at the you know the amount of goals is roughly three per game across all four fixtures yeah. so yeah, no right. no one's gonna i don't think anyone's gonna keep a clean sheet most of them will be two one or two two draws yeah and um, really, they they could come from anybody, couldn't they? So, so really, it is it is a a great week to have a free swing and not not worry about it too much, as long as it's a logical choice. You know, I think any of these guys could uh, could come in, and there's no financial challenge. It's not you know, incredible. You, you're gonna, everyone's going to have ten million change after they put whatever whatever team together. So it's it's, it's great. Don't have to worry about price rises this week, Fergie. <laughs> uh, predicted points for game week 29 um, Son is top 6.7 Tony second 5.7 Watkins 5.6 Bowen 5.4 Madison 5.3 we probably expect those five players in every single team just after just after that then um, Fafana is actually next uh, 4.7 million uh, sorry 4.7 points yeah. Visser 4.7 Bailey 4.6, Morris 4.5, Mooney 4.4. 4. So all these players, those well, five are all, all battling. They're all yeah. battling for that 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 final spot. Uh, Doughty, uh, the best defender, and the only defender in the top 20. He will be incredibly popular. Kulazewski, uh Douglas Dewey, Elanga, Kudus, it will be Paqueta, Sauchek, Bark, and Kaminsky. We basically touched, I think, on almost all all those players there. So um, yeah, there's a lot of of combinations there i do i do feel that a lot of the like eight or nine or potentially even ten of the players are going to be very similar um i think i looked at our two teams independently completely independently of each other i think we've got like 10 10 the same um yeah. the heavy AI team is a, a touch different which we'll look at um again now but just for those who are looking for, for something a bit different um we've got this got this slide actually i think we've mentioned most of these as well now anyway <laughs> but we've got munis and fafana on the slide this year we've mentioned johnson and paquetas we've actually mentioned all, all you know all these players um is there anyone else on a free here any defenders at all or you've you know you've been looking at is um i was i was looking at defenders and there's there's not there's not it's pretty the only pretty one barren. the only one i've got a slight a slight inkling about is kurt zuma you know you think it's time uh, for a bullet header to do? Another 15 pointer from Kurt. He's done it a few times in the past, hasn't he? I mean, I'm just going to say he's not even going to start. And, uh, but he, he's not been mentioned. He, he hasn't been mentioned anywhere by anyone. Um, I'm not even sure if he's playing now in Europe, but, you know, he could be, you know, a bit like Romero, you know, come up with a big, a big header. And if, if West Ham do win the game 1 0, you're looking at 15 points there. So you could punt on Zuma. Uh, Kufal, I think, will be on a lot of benches as a reliable yeah. West Ham backup. Um, and then we've got Villa defenders, and we haven't really talked about them uh, tonight. They've obviously been pretty in favour in people who are building to to play through game week twenty nine. But their Villa's defence has been pretty pretty decimated in recent weeks yeah. with with lots of injuries. Uh, so it has. We had we had Matty cash actually so 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 cash has played the last he's played 90 in uh, six of the last seven games um so you would think you know looking at his expected minutes looking at the lineups that he he would definitely play i'm just i'm just not convinced because during that time cons has been injured for three of those weeks so he was a kind of direct replacement for conza and that's when he came back into the team and then um diego carlos got injured how Torres has been in and out of the team, so like Cons has shifted into back into the middle, and and the and and because the players are all quite versatile, Cash has kind of always 
fa- you know fa- found himself um, a way to kind of play. But if the if the majority of the back fit, you've got to think the 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 first first you know first choice back four probably. Um, Marino, you'd guess, even though Luca Dean started last week, but that's that's kind of Marino or Dean, probably Torres, um, probably uh, Langley, uh, who has played um, ninety now for forever, um, or Diego Carlos, and then probably yeah. Conza at right back. So he's just Conza, not yeah. entirely. Yeah. I know they played a back a back five last week. Uh, well, if we had if we had Adam on, we'd we'd, we'd be a lot more uh, in yeah. the know. Wouldn't I we? think uh, I think if Matty Cash Adam was going to play, if we knew he was going to play, I think he'd be a really good defensive option. But he's not in the hubby I team because reduced his minutes down a touch. Because I'm just I just wasn't wasn't certain. We, you know, we don't advise people yeah. to play play. We don't think he's going to play. So, yeah, but they are out of the eight teams. I think Villa are still statistically the best defense, which is is a bit of a surprise, you know. <laughs> Um, but I think they're ranked sixth overall, and that's like the highest out wow. of all eight teams playing this week. It, so. it just feels like they concede like yeah. almost, almost every every game. But well, they have as as a Martinez owner uh, yeah, for the last exactly you know first weeks. Uh, you know exactly. I was I, I'm all, I'm actually thinking of bringing him back in for the free hit, ironically, <laughs> because I might do a a, a a Brentford triple up, and then then well, yeah. who's your keeper going to be? You know. So uh, yeah, I, I I think if it's if it's going to be a Villa defender, I'll probably end up with Martinez. I think. Uh, so. Colin Bugler in the chat says uh, Nico Williams. If I was free hitting, not not a bad shout there. Um, not, not not sure. I thought I knew. I don't know. He lost his place uh, earlier on the season, hasn't he? But yeah, played the last five. Looks good. A uh, waiter Luton looks a good looks yeah. good shout though. And if you've got any other players who are interested in, in the free hit, please feel free to put them in the chat, and we will we will call call them out. Um, just for those players then who are not free hitting and those who are kind of wanting to look ahead, I'm I gotta be honest, I'm pretty, I'm pretty much looking forward to kind of closing the door on this period of the season and then coming back after the break, like really fresh FBL head, looking forward to the running. Um, but for yeah. those who are not playing their free hit the, the, this week for whatever reason, either they've already used it or they're going to save it for a, a future double game week 34, as an example. Um, who are the teams um and, and players rich who you would kind of advise um for these players sorry so for these managers to be looking at uh who are the best picks okay all right so i think tottenham stand out as a team you can invest in permanently yeah i agree not just to get through this week because if you look at their fixtures from game week 30 you know as soon as we come back from the break they've got Luton at home which is arguably now the best fixture that you can get Absolutely. Sheffield United at home maybe is equal to that. But yeah, Luton at home, first fixture up. So if you're buying, if you need a defender and you want to buy one of Poro or Dogi, they're, they're great for covering this week, but also for the... Uh, Game Week 30 is going to be a very difficult week for people to navigate defensively because Arsenal play City. And we've all got lots of Arsenal and City defenders who play each other, so they're not ideal to play that week. Uh, so Tottenham... Definitely stand out. Even if you want to bring Madison, if you've got Son already, Son is a potential captain in game week 30. Well, we're all getting Salah and Harlem back and so on. So I think I think Tottenham probably out of the teams playing this week are the easiest team to invest in if you're not free hitting. Um, beyond that, it's pretty tricky. I mean, you want to be losing your Luton assets because they obviously play Tottenham, then they play Arsenal. So they're definitely not Luton. Don't buy any more Luton. <laughs> and they're both away as for well. This, for this week. But then when you look at Brentford, you know, if you want to get Tony, and a lot of people are looking at getting Tony in for Solanke, easy move this week. You know, you've got Brentford do have three home games in four. They play United at home, which arguably is a winnable fixture yep, for definitely. them. Brighton at home. Villa away, Sheffield United at home. So a nice block of three Absolutely. home games in four uh, leading into the double. Um, so quite like Brentford as another option to invest in. So I probably would, again, you could look at Reguillon, uh, you could look at the keeper, you could look at um, Vissa. You know, any of these guys to go alongside Tony are, are good investments for non-free hitters this week. So it's really just look at that block of fixtures Um Post game me thirty, and and I think those are the two teams with the uh, with the best run of games. Villa themselves play Wolves, um, 
and Brentford in game weeks 30 and 32. But their fixtures are very mixed after the break. But after game week 30, you're going to see people, I think, starting to risk coming off Watkins even. Yeah. Um, even though he's been consistent because they start to play City there and they play Arsenal. So their away games are really tough and you know, and the ship might have sailed a little bit on Villa um, there. So, so yeah, I think definitely Brentford and Tottenham, I would say. If, do you think? I think that's it. Oh, well, Forest as well. Forest. Forest. So, right, Forest yeah. Crystal Palace, Fulham and Wolves. Again, three home games in four um, in 30 to 33. So that makes hunting. You know, if you're going to have a punt this week, Alanga, Wood, as you've mentioned. Um, uh, and if you need a keeper, then maybe Zells as a yeah. as an option to, uh, to cover those games. Because really, you're going to want to be if you're particularly if you're going to go late on the wild card, you want you want to be making an investment for twenty nine plus the the other the other block of fixtures. It's probably just worth adding as well that of all those you've mentioned, um, not not many of those. Uh, I think it's only Spurs actually of all the teams playing this weekend have got the potential for a double in thirty four as well. So investing in in Spurs especially for for multiple reasons looks the kind of yeah. you know the way to go. I think don't it especially if you're not going to free hit in thirty four. So. Yep. Yeah, I think so. Really good stuff there, Rich. Uh, looking at predicted points for the next few weeks. Uh, Sun is Sun is top. So this, inc- you know, the, uh, this is for the managers um, who are using free transfers this week. Sun is top. Haaland is still still really really high up. There. <laughs> um, I kept him in my team. I, I just wasn't sure about kind of what to do to see if um, Salah would would be back in Thursday. I think I think I might just leave it. I, you know, obviously we we probably get to see. Um, if Salah plays this evening, um, whether he plays in the international in the break, as well. they're playing United, aren't they? In the cup. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So we, you know, we we'll get to see a little bit more. But I didn't want to make the space to, you know, to bring him in or even bring him in because he, you know, he, he did have a recurrence of his injury, didn't he? And he's kind of done this before at times. I mean, he did it after after Afcon. Was it last year, or the year before? He just wasn't quite the same after, is it? You know, after um, after Afcon and and stuff. So I'm. I'm just going to leave it. Um, but if he's fit and firing and ready for game week 30, you think he's going to be in my team? He's, uh, I, I think it. Well, I've got. I think if Son goes up one more pip, which I think he will by the weekend, he's nine point nine. If he hits ten million, then I'd have exact money to do get this Son to Salah for free in oh. game week 30. Now, would you do that move with Son having Luton at home and being Son, a potential captain? You can't, can Son, you? you? Son can't. is top of the predictions in his own right. Yeah. He's an absolute... The only thing yeah. I would say is I think a lot of it does depend on Richarlison's fitness because Son up front is a different animal to what he is yeah. when he's on the wing. So we'll, we'll see if Richarlison yeah. comes back and whether Richarlison actually gets back into the team. Um, yeah. Ireland second, uh, 23.6 points. Tony third, 22.8. I do agree with you um, on, on Tony and Brentford's fixtures going forward are really, really smart. I know he's been quiet recently, but their fixtures at home are really, really nice. Um, th- th- you know, as you say, I think three of the next four after this week are at home. Then they're away to Luton, um, and they're good fixtures as well. You know, good attacking fixtures. Mm. So I can see me bringing him in and kind of leaving him. He's, he looks, he strikes me as the kind of player that he just needs that that goal. Then you're going to be able to run. So I'm, quite, I'm kind of happy with him. Uh, Watkins is 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 in at the moment. Salah is obviously high of twenty two point six points. So even though he blanks this week, he's still really high. Madison twenty two, Bowen twenty, uh, Visser nineteen. Uh, Nicholas Jackson is one as they say he's going to be he's going to be interesting going forward. Nicholas Jackson, I probably wouldn't look at him now, but you know Chelsea are getting better. I think I'm gonna... still I think I'm still scarred from he's the gonna... early part You'll of the season. Definitely have an end I of the season, mate. When they double dropped doubled. through the floor rank wise by owning him for six weeks. Yeah, no, it was. Yeah. I'm, I'm not sure about that, but Gusto is a good shout, I think, for yeah. Chelsea. Too. Um, apparently, um, uh, Kudus just missed an open goal from a few yards out, thanks to uh, Janny and FPL Freddy in the chat for that. Um, so we've got the Hub AI Game Week 29 free hit team. Um, very interestingly, uh, double Luton and double Burnley defence, which is um, which is. Very- very interesting. Which is very odd, but uh, so it, it's <laughs> gone for Kaminsky in goal with Flecken on the bench. Uh, reckons Kaminsky's going to score four points, Flecken 3.8. Um, Doughty for obvious reasons, you know, that's, that's probably fair. But it's, yes, it's it's actually got triple Burnley. Um, it, fancies, it fancies Burnley against Brentford. It's got Asignon in defence and Taylor. Um, 
And then it's got wow. Sun, Bowen, Madison, and Bailey, which you, you know, it's hard to argue with that. A bit more really. template, yeah. And then Tony mm-hmm. Watkins and Fafana. So Fafana, if you remember, right. was quite high up on predicted points. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, I, I definitely think that Oro and you know, um, a regular on a be- a better pick, but this I still both I still do expect both those teams to concede. Even though I said yeah, I think, I, think they, I think all I think all, I think all, teams all they will all concede exactly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if there is going to be a clean sheet, there's no one out there that I don't think can pick it. If you look at all the bookies' odds, <laughs> exactly. they're all under thirty percent. They're all between twenty and thirty percent. So they're they're guessing as well. So basically, I just think you know you you just pick them. I, I think Brentford will win the fixture. Um, I think Forest and I'd say Forest and Luton is going to be a two-two. I think Villa West Ham could be a two-two, and I think maybe three-one to Tottenham against Fulham. Those those are going to be my sort of predictions. Yeah, exactly. So I think pick a team that supports those those wins. If I could have picked two wins, it would be Brentford and Tottenham. Yeah. Um, but the others I think are too close to call. So good. Yeah. Um, interesting, interesting choice. I mean, I, you know, very. I've never, I haven't seen a single free hit draft with three Burnley players in it. Q, Q, Burnley 2, Brentford 0, mate. Q, yeah, I Q know. that on the weekend. Um, <laughs> a really good point uh, from uh, Peter in the chat. Uh, need to be careful on holding like this a long term because Mbwemo, I don't know if you've seen him, he's back in training. Brian Mbwemo is back in training. So, uh, interesting one. Yeah, he could end up being the one. He could Visser, be. One thing with Vissa, he doesn't always, well, often play 90 minutes. He does tend to get hooked off. So. He does. Could be that that, that Buemo comes on for for twenty minutes at the end uh, just to get, six point, get reintroduced. Six point seven million. He is he is cheap and he is. Uh, yeah. Yeah, if he'd had a game season. or if he'd had a sub appearance, I think he'd be on most free hits. People would punt it because he's been so so good. But I can't see him starting. Best FPL game week twenty nine captain. Uh, Rich, have you given this a lot of thought? Not really. I think you know that if you want to go really different. Um, so I don't. I haven't seen the graphic yet, but I don't need to. If you want to go really different from the uh, the the mass captain, then I'd probably go for Tony. I'd you pick a penalty taker uh, with high upside and, and and swing against it. You know, people are starting to do that because they want to make ground. Um, you see, Tony's coming in second there. Yeah, or oh, Watkins. You know, Watkins. The amount of braces. You know, Watkins Absolutely. has scored this season. You know, West Ham rank something like 18th defensively across the 20 teams. What's his, Watkins is going to get chances in that game. So you could go with Watkins, you could go with uh, Tony, but I think overwhelmingly Son will be almost like a neutralised captain this week. I think so. Be like Haaland. Um, on the poll on the hub, it's, it's, only got, it's only got 16 votes. That's because I whipped it up quickly and then whipped it down quickly just to get a quick yeah. sense check. But yeah. 81% of uh, of those 16 people went went mm. for son uh, one one for tony one for madison you know so there's not yeah, there's not much there son he, yeah. he's he's top of pretty points he's top of the polls um man in form what else do you want really just battered a team away yeah. as well you know it's not even yeah. like it's a home and away kind of bias there so um son looks good i think and yeah i think he's going to be very very popular this week not much more to talk about there um, Fergie's a punt, gave me 29 to 32. Um, Rich, I'm going to say it. I'm a man on form. I am a man in form. I picked Semenyo in game week uh, yeah, 27 well and he scored. And I kept him for last because I couldn't find anyone else. I kept him last week. Brace, absolute legend. So uh, I'm a man in form. Um, and I have gone for someone this this week. Um, I, well, I've, 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 I've obviously mentioned him already. I'm not going to go into too much depth about him again, but. Chris Wood to me, like he's got he's got the kind of profile of a player to turn up against against weak weak defenses and really really do some damage. And Luton at the moment are they're a they're a bleeding weeping defensive team, aren't they? And he's playing up front. He could be on penalty. I'm not sure if he is on penalties, but he could yeah, be on penalties. Six foot seven as well, isn't he? So. <laughs> he is. So I'm yeah. really really contemplating him as my yeah. third. Third pick. Um, but sorry, as, as my third third forward, I really yep. am. I, I only kind of looked looked at, at the numbers earlier, and I looked at his minutes, and I just noticed that he was injured. And then when ninety out for five game weeks, not a minute, and then ninety minutes. That's that shows a lot of confidence in in him, and a lot of kind of need need for him. I think maybe so. 
think I might do it, you know, this time. I punt, I punted him earlier. I, do you know, I think I think I might have punted him, Rich, when he scored his hat, or not far off, around when he scored, he scored his hat trick. So, with it up in the, I think it's the week to do it. I th- it's the week to do it. It is. I think I think you, have, you don't have to own him after this week. So why not? You know, have, have fun with it. You know. I think my um, second best pick for that third for, third spot is probably Vissa. Um, I think he's got. Two, I want to say two in his last two. Like I say, against a weak a weak Burnley team. Um, he he's probably the more sensible pick, I think. Wood is very much a punt, as in you know he's a bit you know a, a little bit more of like a hail mary, but I do like um, Visser. His minutes are just an issue. He always comes off after like seventy, whereas Wood tends to play the full ninety. So yeah, he's he's currently my third person of choice. And if he comes off, he will be he will be a differential. Well, he's been injured for five weeks, so his his ownership is going to be. Let's just have a quick look. 0.8 percent, mate. Not not, Amazing. not much off when you're an under one percent player. Yeah. So uh... no, and it's that kind of player you want. You want two or three of those players in your in your free hit side. You only need one of them to bang, and you've guaranteed you yourself do. green. Exactly that. The the yeah. only thing is, yeah, Alex has just put a a, a one year will start. This is just. Slight, yeah, this is it. This is the slight, yeah. the slight thing which just yeah. makes me lean more towards this. I mean, there's being punty, and then there's just being silly. So I need to give it a lot more thought. Uh, Bowen has scored two nil. West oh, Ham okay. looks like uh, West Ham will be going through. Uh, thank you very much. They lost one nil on ag- on in the first leg, didn't they? So they're now leading <laughs> yes. the tie, right? Yeah. So Bowen, okay. Bowen two nil. Um, Outside the box as well. Thank, thanks for that FPL, Freddie. Right, thanks okay. for the updates there. We appreciate that. Okay, let's have a look at our free hit teams so far, Rich. No massive surprises in them, um, but, you know, no. it's, pretty, it's reasonably obvious, right? Um, anything to call out on yours? Um, I think I'm moving a little bit off the, the, the goalkeeper. From, I think this draft's got Flecken in it, has yeah, it? Yeah, um, so. yeah, so I think I'm going to play three Brentford out field players so I will have Regri on in there and up front I will have Wissa and Tony so that leaves no room yeah, for the keeper so I, I have to reluctantly bring back Martinez or I might just hedge against the the you know the rest of the crowd and bring Ariola back for the home game okay. and just have him uh, for some save points Is it, the, the goalkeeper's just wide open and I can't get it right I haven't been able to get it right all season I've seen an argument that says have Leno because he's liable to have, have to make the mo- maximum amount of saves. But would you be playing three Tottenham? You don't want it. You don't want to be relying on like Leno. three saves for one point, no, do you? It's like... No, you're not. No, not really. Oh, yeah. You want to have a player that's got a chance of winning the game. So yeah, Flecker's probably going to go. But yeah, the the, the back three is pretty cemented in Porro, Doughty, and uh, yeah. Reguilon. Pretty template three in midfield with Son, Bowen and Madison, especially Bowen's now scored. I think, you know, again, that, that will cement him in most teams. Paqueta, as you said, has scored already tonight. So he will probably come in uh, as well. And then I've got Alanga in there for Forrest to, like to attack that. that. I think you've got to have one of Alanga yeah. and Wood or, or a Forrest attacker to attack that, that Luton because there's going to be goals from Luton. Whether I go 3-5-2 or not, or whether I go... Uh, three four three. I haven't decided. So at the moment, obviously in this draft, there's no Vissa showing, and I think I've got Munez in there yeah. as a placeholder on the bench. But I, I possibly will drop Paqueta to the bench and play with Alanga and go with Wissa in a, in a three man front line. That feels a bit more aggressive than uh, than playing with Paqueta. But yeah, I mean, we might we might all need our first sub. Uh, I haven't really thought much beyond that. I've seen people drafting and haven't even bothered putting a. <laughs> The positions two and three I, I in the team. Like... They've still got Virgil Van Dijk in there and stuff. So, uh, yeah, but uh, yeah, I don't think they'll be needed the, the lower positions. But you never know. I, do you know? I hope I hope they are right from a, yeah. from a selfish yeah. free hit perspective. Yeah. I hope we wake up on yeah. Saturday morning and Watkins, Bowen, and Son. Yeah, all these people playing they, bench they've wankery all, or whatever. They've all no. got. Um, <laughs> they all have the sniffles. I yeah. uh, don't want anything more yeah. sinister than that, obviously. But yeah. uh, we all wake up with a sniffle. And all the people who have got apologies for those listening who have got this way. Yeah. This is just a yeah. very yeah. selfish yeah. view yeah. now. All those who've got six or seven players have suddenly got they're they're relying on Charlie Taylor just to save their game yeah. week and uh, and we've got a bunch of guys coming off the bench. But um, yeah, it's a very yeah. selfish perspective, I will add. 
Uh, my team is not much different. I'm trying to think what's different actually. I've just got um, Fafana, and I've got um, so I've I've started Fafana in this in this draft. I've got um, Kaminsky in goal. It just it just came up because he he had the highest predicted points. Um, but uh, yeah, I definitely won't won't be going double loot and defense as the AI suggests. I think actually it had Kaminsky because he is already in my team. Maybe that maybe that's why um, Bailey on the bench. Um, and I've got Nico Williams. Uh, will probably pick up as a bench player, and uh, Toffolo on the on the bench as well. But again, there's, there's nothing really going on there. So, yep, um, it's just that final that final spot. I do I do think actually, if I go for a Langer, I don't think I'll go for Wood as well. Just double Forest no, I think attacks. If you want <laughs> one attacker, yeah, I, th- I, think, I think a Langer's attacker. enough. Um, or you might want to balance it out and go, you know, Elanga and Morris, or you know. Go just, like that because I mean Morris is still going to be popular. Just um, quickly on your thoughts on this because there's been a lot of I've seen a lot of debate around whether you should not choose attackers that are going against defenders or you know or or, or the other way is, is to absolutely hedge right. So if you're going for triple Brentford with two attackers, would you ever consider going for Trafford in goal just in case you have this freak result, which just means then that you do get some points out of the disaster or not? Not, not really. Although when there's only four games, I don't think you can avoid, you know, having players from teams that that, that clash against each other. I do think you've got to maybe pick a couple of these fixtures and think, right? I, I think Tottenham are going to win that game, or yeah. I think Brentford are going to win that game, and therefore load up on those. Yeah. You know, back yourself with that that thought and load up with players from those sides because if you're too neutral and you start covering all the teams like if you have eight players yeah. across the eight teams you're 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 unliable to you know you know not unless everybody draws you're you're not likely to come out of it yeah um very well so generally i don't like to do it but i'm not against it I, it never really worries me if my i'm playing a defender you know and he's and i've got an attacker playing him against him you know because we're not in control of this are we oh, exactly. you know, at the end of the day and you know, it's just it can quite easily and this is a week where any of the teams could keep a clean sheet we just don't know which one it's going to be um but i would if i was going to bet heavily against a, a match being uh a, a nil-nil draw it would be the luton forest game so i think that's gonna <laughs> that's, that's the most likely to have goals in it yeah. out of all of them <laughs> agree with that um a couple of people shouted out Werner. He didn't start Werner didn't start last week did he um no no he, he didn't he didn't start uh no. last week and obviously with johnson there so i'm not i'm not i'm not sure well, johnson put in a very very strong performance and i, I yeah. think having Grief. having consulted with a couple of tottenham fans uh this week you know they've they've reliably told me that they think Johnson will retain his place. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. I th- th- think Johnson is a good shout, but again, do you really want to go triple in the field? I don't know. I suppose, though I though I suppose, if you do think that um, Fulham are going to score, which which I do, then maybe that's that's, that's not the worst because he'd be low, low, you know, he'll be low owned. And obviously since Madison has been back, Poro's attacking output has dropped off an absolute cliff. So, um, yeah, it'd be interesting. Uh, Manchester City says, I think Luton have scored 15 Prem games in a row. That is interesting. So maybe the, the Luton... Yeah, they, they definitely a, they have a go. I mean, so do yeah. Burnley. These these teams all have a go, don't they? Um, and uh, Luton are, you know, scored three goals last night. They're just, you know, shit more than they scored yeah. most of the, most weeks. And if you look back, if you look at the teams, you know, if you really want to into a tiebreaker, just look back over the, the fixtures and look at how many times these teams lose games. <laughs> That's you know, there's, there's, there is, you know, Burnley and Luton and Forest. In fact, they lose most of the time. Yeah. You know, if you look at Fulham, they only lose about half the time. Yeah. So that's a massive difference. And therefore, at home, you'd give them a bigger chance against Tottenham. And I think we're, 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 we're sort of writing off Fulham to an extent, just because they're playing Tottenham. Um, but they're certainly not the worst team in here. I think they, they're, you know, probably rank fourth or fifth out of the eight. Um, certainly above the uh, the three bottom sides that are playing. So yeah, there's what's there could be some joy in Fulham. What's the yeah. mantra, Rich? Get get good players from good teams. Good players don't get, from good don't teams. Don't get shit from yes. shit teams. Yeah, which is exactly. what and, and 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 I've, I've, I've again I've exchanged some messages this week with people. You know we're gonna be game week thirty four will come up and it'll be. <laughs> Palace and Sheffield United, and we'll all be hitting in we'll George like, Bulldog, Bull, Bulldog, Triple Tyrick Captain, Tyrick Mitchell, you know, 
to bench boost it. And then we'll be shock horror when we only get about three points <laughs> from it. that bench boost. It's like, it's just, we can't resist it, can we? And we'll be just spending all, all the transfers, taking hits to get them in as well. You have, you have to fill your bench. You have to fill your bench. Exactly. Because... Exactly. <laughs> Good stuff. Um, that is it from us for this week. Uh, hopefully everyone has found it helpful. Um, and thank you so much for everyone who joined us in the chat. Um, those who are going to watch it back and those on the podcast versions, your support is very, very much appreciated. Uh, Lewis Bonilla ranked 64th in the Green Arrow League. Very, very well played there, Lewis. Superb stuff. Uh, Rich, thank you so much, as usual. Where can people get hold of you? Uh, at Rich Clark, FPL on Twitter. Uh, my handle is at FFH underscore Fergie. This podcast and video will be in the Fancy Football Hub YouTube channel with the podcast versions available on all major podcast platforms. If you like what you watch, please press the like button. Remember to subscribe uh, to the channel in the bottom right-hand corner of the screen. If you enjoyed your listen, please rate the podcast and leave a comment. Um, Colin Huger says, Adam Wharton time. You heard it here first. He's the he's either pal- he's the Palace midfielder, isn't he? He'll be, he'll be oh, the one he? in the... It's game. another Zabarnia. Exactly, exactly <laughs> that. Uh, we will be back yeah. in two weeks. Obviously, it's a break now for two weeks. Um, looking ahead to game week 30. It'll be interesting. There'll be wild cards flying about and is Salah back and whatever else. Double game weeks on the we'll horizon. Finally, finally stop, stop talking about Luton and Burnley assets, can't we? Oh, gosh. Um, oh, that'd be good. We've got one, one final question off. Uh, Manchester, he says, I know it's obvious I know the obvious answer is as high as possible but what is your realistic target for your overall rank at the end of the season now Rich, where do you where do you really think you can get to? Um, I think having had having had the little boost last week um, and obviously three chips to come in ten weeks from here I'd be disappointed if I don't make it into the top 100k um, I'd got a stretch goal that i'd like to keep my run of 50ks going and we've talked about that in the past haven't we that i that that, i think 10k is gone but i'd like to target the top 50k but i'm going to need a hell of a run of luck to support that i think to support the chips i think you'll do it mate i really i I really do um i think on mine i'm on 273k uh free hitting this week you've got you've got to hope to to, to to gain a bit, you know, fifty hundred k in rank avenue there. Um, I, I haven't got the wild card, which is obviously going to be a, you know, yeah. a, a, you know a, a real handicap for me going to the back end of the season. I would like to think, I would like to think, I can maybe scrape my way into the top kind of hundred hundred fifty k. We will see hundred k if everything goes my way. Just outside, if not, I'd be happy with that. I mean, considering want, the the absolute I shambles. Want, um, I want another one of these. Basically, you, you want I've another got one of those, seventeen yeah. seventeen of them at the moment. I'd like another one of these. So I think they start at two hundred and fifty k. I think that's the highest you can have a rank to get a poker chip. So here we go. But but the answer to the question is one of these, please. F- the FPLmerch dot com. If you want to go and have a look at those. Yeah, exactly. Um. Yes, in the meantime, we're off now for two weeks. Uh, in the meantime, we hope you have a great game at 29, whether you're free hitting or not. The very, very best of luck. Uh, enjoy the international break uh, and may all your arrows be green. Good night, all. Good luck, all. <laughs>